We have an exclusive opportunity now to learn more about this case that has occurred in South Carolina. And what I've been curious about, what I've been uh, curious about is uh, the person who was courageous enough to sit there and videotape this as it was going on. And let me tell you something, it's not easy to videotape action. I've worked with some of the finest photographers in the world, both at the local level here at Channel 7, at NBC, at Fox, at uh, CNN. And I've seen even the best photographers break sometimes when there's something going on, when shots are fired, when uh, cannons are going off, when planes are crashing, when volcanoes are erupting, and on and on and on. You just have a tendency to sometimes lose your focus and you just move. This guy stayed with the action as if he was a professional. I mean, it's very impressive, the pictures that this guy shot that showed the entire world what this police officer seemed to have done. I have to say allegedly just to cover ourselves and to be fair, although, my God. So joining us now is uh, Carlos Miller. He is uh, an author and the founding publisher of... uh, of uh, photography is not a crime. It was launched in 2007 after Miami uh, multimedia journalist uh, Carlos Miller was arrested for taking photos of Miami police officers during a journalistic assignment in order to document uh, his trial. And he's good enough to join us now on the phone. Uh, Carlos, how are you, my friend? Good, Rick. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad you're there. Uh, Trying to get a better feel for this. What do we know about this guy? As far as I understand, I'll tell you what I know. And then we can kind of share notes on this. As I understand, this guy is still in hiding. He took the picture, gave it to, I understand, a lawyer who reached out to the New York Times. And then the New York Times uh, investigated this, looked at it, published it. And that's how this whole thing came to be. Is that right? That's my understanding as well. But we're still looking into it as well. You know, it's interesting because there have been cases where people have done things like this and it's kind of ruined their lives. The guy who shot the Eric Garner video, remember the guy who was choked in Long Island? Yes. He ended up getting busted by the police for taking the picture. They came back and found that he had uh, gun possession violations or something. So, uh, you know, I think it's smart the way this guy did this this time. Yeah, and the other guy, he's actually on a hunger strike up in Rikers Island because... You know, he, he suspects they're going to poison him with rat poison. And they have found rat poison pellets in his food as well as in the food of other inmates. So, yeah, that's just going on up there. Do you think, I asked this question earlier, talking to uh, Carlos Miller, author of uh, Photography is Not a Crime. How important, how important are these videotapes that we're seeing shot by amateurs like this one that we seem to have uh, uh, seen in this case in South Carolina. And let me pose the question the way I did earlier in the show. If this tape is not available, do you think this cop walks like many others? Well, without a doubt. You know, before the tape or well, the video um, emerged, you know, he was saying he was in fear for his life. He was saying the other man took his taser. Mm-hmm. You know, you see in the video, he walked up and dropped his taser right next to the man's body. <laughs> and, you know, and, and this happens all the time. And, but, you know, the one good thing I do want to point out, the guy who recorded it, he recorded it with his phone in a horizontal position. Mm. Most people, they hold their phone in a vertical position where you get that vertical video. And if he would have done that, we would not have seen the whole shooting. Mm. Because you, you notice how the guy was about 20, 30 feet away from the cop. And we, would have, we might have seen the cop shooting. We might have seen you know, the other so guy. Say, say, hold on. Say that again. He, he held the phone in the horizontal position. Instead of the vertical position, which is the correct way to do it, right? Right. Look, when you hold it, most people, most amateurs hold their phone in the vertical position. Right. So you see these videos, and you've got a black line on either side of the video, both sides of the video, and you see one strip of the video, so you're missing two-thirds of the video. Hmm. And, and because it's easier to hold the, the phone that way, the phone is set up that way. But when you hold your phone sideways, you get the vertical, I mean, the horizontal video. You see the whole picture, in this case, you you would not have seen it if he would have shot it in the vertical position. So th- he and he had enough sense not to say anything because a lot of times we see these videos and we see we hear the person with the camera start yelling at the cops and we start yelling at the cops. You have to understand the microphone is right by your mouth. You're holding the phone and then that becomes very distracting to the person viewing the video as well as then the cops turn around. They realize what's going on. 
you know, these cops had, from what I saw in that video, they had no idea they were being recorded. So he. Well, I don't know said, about that. I, you know, I, I'm watching. I've watched the video now about 82 times, and I think on the 81st time, I'm kidding, but. As I was watching the video one time, I saw the officer look at the camera. Or look, didn't you, Scotty? Yeah. And, I, and I almost thought for one minute there, the officer kind of said to himself, oh, crap, is that what I think it is? But then, it, like, he, see if, you could, see if you could pop that video up there on the screen real quick. Now, I don't know. I'm, this is conjecture on my part, by the way. But it looked to me like at one point after he had already shot the guy and the guy's laying on the ground dying and now the officer's walking toward him. Look at it again, Carlos, and you'll see that the officer does look away right at the camera. And unless the guy's hidden in a bush or something, and I don't know, we don't know where the guy was. All right, it's coming up right here. All right, boom, 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 boom. He shoots him, and now... Okay, now the officer starts walking. You see? Okay, he looked right there. He took a glance toward him. And now he's calling. And now keep watching. Keep watching. All right. I'm just going to tell you what I see, Carlos. I don't know what you've seen so far. Very still watching. Right. There's a place right here where it looks like he watches. Because I'm, I'm going to ask you now. Let's suppose the officer sees that, right? Does the officer have a right? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Is that is it is it coming up right here? Right here. Okay. Oh, okay. After he's picked up the taser. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now he's picked up the taser. He's gonna go back and drop the taser to make it look like the guy took the taser from him. Okay. Yeah, right there. He's looking at the camera. Yep. He's look that doesn't mean he sees it, by the way. If the officer if the officer sees the camera, Carlos, you know a lot about this. You write about it. What can, can he come over and ask for it as evidence and take it away? Well, he can ask for it, but he doesn't have a right to take it away. You know, they the only way he can actually take the camera without the consent of the camera owner is is if he believes that the camera footage is going to be destroyed. If he believes the evidence is going to be destroyed mm. in what they call exigent circumstances, and and but they have to. Ask the guy, they have to, oh, can we make a copy of that? They can't just walk up and take the camera. They do this all the time, mm -hmm. by the way. But, but you know, the Department of Justice released a statement a few years ago saying they're not allowed to do that. And now we have a politician in Colorado who's trying to pass a law that says if they do destroy the evidence or they do confiscate a camera without a warrant or a subpoena, then the person who owns the camera is entitled up to $15,000 in civil fees. Because it's, it's going on all over the country. Now, this is very blatant. This is hopefully is going to wake a lot of people up. And, you know, so they, you know, this is evidence. And a lot of times, especially if you're catching police abuse, you know, that's evidence against the cops. So why should we trust the cops to take possession of evidence against them when you have the police investigating police? I think there's no question that there's a real buffer here in this situation. That evidence in that moment should be held by an independent board, by someone other than the person shooting it or the police officer. And I think in this case, the fact that it was immediately sent to the New York Times, I, I mean, at least apparently they got it to an attorney. The attorney got it to the New York Times. The New York Times sent it to this sledge or whatever it's called, this board of police officers in the, in the, in the state yeah. that handles this. Is that what it is? What is sledge? I, I think it's like the state, of, the state law enforcement agency. You know how we have the Florida Department of Agents, whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, FTLE, right, the Florida, right, right. right exactly. So it, it, is there a version of, of that? Up there. And they're the ones who forced the city then to look at this case and change what they had already ruled on it. This is fascinating. Carlos that, that, that's, very that's very surprising. The fact that they took his, they basically changed, they, they, they charged this guy with murder without any delay. You know, it was two days or three days after the incident. You know, his lawyer dropped him and they put him in jail without any bond. I mean, this doesn't happen. I mean, this is, you know, you got to hand it to the leadership up in that police department or whoever made that decision. Well, normally, I think, I think. You know, can I tell you something? This had less to do with the city and more to do with their state board. Okay, right. the city, well, if it was, the city was doing everything possible to use the guy's, uh, the police officer's excuse as just that, as an excuse. It wasn't right. until their state board, what we call the FTLE here in the state of Florida, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the Florida Department of FDLE, until the FDLE, in their case, stepped in and said, hey, this is wrong, this is murder, did they actually do something about it? Just, just to be clear. Uh, Carlos, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it, sir. 
Thank you, Rick.